hundreds of miles away from the tundra. This is from a place in southwest Alaska. Sue Natale carefully studies permafrost, the frozen layer of soil found in places like Alaska and Russia. The permafrost region stores a lot of carbon. It stores, has, holds twice as much carbon than is in the atmosphere. And much of that carbon is currently locked away, frozen in permafrost. But there's a problem. We talk a lot about trying to keep global average temperatures you know, below you know, two degrees Celsius increase, and the Arctic has already passed that. As the permafrost thaws with the warming, the once trapped greenhouse gases get released. We're starting to see the Arctic um, shifting from a carbon sink to a carbon source. Each of these jars in the Woods Hole Research Center lab contains a permafrost sample, Natali measuring the gases released. Our projections for the permafrost region is that they're basically going to be, their emissions are going to be on par with the current rates of U.S. emissions. An alarming prediction. It's no longer good enough to stop adding CO2 to the atmosphere. We need to pull a lot more out. Removing carbon dioxide and lowering its impact on climate change is a main focus of Philip Duffy, the research center's executive director. We're a very science-focused organization, but we really are about having Impact. The research center calculates how much carbon is stored in soil and forest, working with countries like Brazil and Malaysia to predict where even more of this natural storage could occur if land is converted away from agriculture.